Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse, Chapter 551 Lilith Drenched, Chapter 551 Lilith Drenched. After storing all the mutant beast corpses inside his storage ring, Bizemon looked around to confirm that he had not left anything behind, before he proceeded to walk in a southerly direction, together with Lilith and Shang Yun Bing Shu. Sure enough, even though the three of them were walking, their bodies seemed to constantly appear and disappear, as if they were blinking. One instant they were here, but in the next second, they were five meters ahead and so on continuously, until their backs were no longer visible as they disappeared into the distant horizon. Walking with the elegance of a goddess and the seductive charm of a demoness, Lilith glanced sideways at Shang Yun Bing Shu, and noticed that Shang Yun Bing Shu's spirit seemed a little low. However, despite knowing the reason behind the Ice Princess's low mood, Lilith not only did not help her, but instead pushed her further by engaging in conversation with Bai Zeman again and again. In one of those conversations, the curiosity of Lilith was piqued when she looked at the little pink dolphin in the embrace of Bai Zeman. Hey, you little scoundrel! What's the matter with this little animal? Did you make it your pet? Lilith said as she stared at the little dolphin. Bai Zeman looked at Lilith and for a moment he could have sworn that her eyes shone brightly, as if they contained millions of stars within them, as she looked at the little animal in his embrace, it was a look practically identical to the look Shang Yun Bing Shu had been giving Xiao Xiao all this time. I guess cute creatures have an advantage over women after all. Bai Zeman chuckled secretly as he caressed the harmless-looking little animal gently. This little one is named Xiao Xiao, and will temporarily stay with us as an ally, as it is the only way I can communicate with the mermaid princess, and have her keep her part of the pact, Bai Zeman said slowly as he kept his eyes straight ahead, wishing to arrive all ready to rest. Eh? Lilith blinked as if she had heard something surprising and said with some skepticism, you already met a race leader and struck up a relationship with her? I'm afraid Bing Shu and I already met three race leaders. Bai Zeman smiled bitterly and shook his head. The appearance of the beast leader and the zombie leader had come as a great shock to Bai Zeman. After all, this was the first time he had come face to face with existences at his level, as far as subclass was concerned. The power of a leader type existence is really different. Bai Zeman said as he recalled the fierce battle on the bridge that had occurred a couple of hours ago. Even though my current power makes me an invincible existence to any second-order creature, and only a third-order existence with level 150 or above, can probably take me on face to face, that zombie and that ape were only level 101 existences, but they managed to give me quite a few headaches. Although in the past Bai Zeman had faced goblin leaders, the leading power that the goblins had was somehow fragmented into four. Therefore, even though Geminder was the highest leader among the four goblins, he did not receive 100% of what a leadership subclass would give him, if the goblins recognized only him as their leader. Leader-type characters are encouraged by the soul record. That's why they receive a small power boost for each living being under their wing, and with the increase of living beings that said character leads the power boost can grow to terrifying proportions, Lilith pointed out casually. She knew that as a member of the demonic army, one of the most powerful factions in history, as well as the largest at present, the power Lucifer received as single leader was probably as colossal as anyone could ever imagine. Not only Lucifer, all the other leaders of higher existences were the same. Unlike in fantasy novels where the main character could become the strongest alone, in the real world, things were different. Here, a lone character could never become the most powerful, because even if that per a faction not only represented a lot of manpower to help in performing different tasks, but also meant a percentage of raw power for the leader of that faction. Now do you understand a little of the reason I told you that you needed to build your own faction? Lila smiled weakly as memories of Bai Zeman growling in disagreement flashed in her memory. Even though you are strong and in the future, you will be a lot stronger than you are now, you would eventually run into a wall that you could never break down, because this is a wall that can only be broken down slowly from the beginning. You mean I am now breaking that wall without me even realizing it? Bai Zeman said after some silent thought. Right. Lilith nodded casually. Even though you don't notice it, in the future you will see how from day one all your efforts will pay off. Even those efforts you thought were in vain will eventually prove their worth. You just need to wait and naturally the universe will answer you. Don't worry, I'm slowly seeing the fruits of everything you told me I needed to do. Bai Zeman looked at Shang Yun Bing Shu with a weak smile as he said these words. Although temporarily only Shang Yun Bing Shu was of real help to him, as time went by they would all begin to show their worth. 
Moreover, Bai Zemin was aware that living alone was impossible, he needed humans to perform other tasks. It was impossible to do everything by himself unless he was an omniscient and omnipresent being. The reality was not a light novel where the loners were invincible. Even the strongest eventually needed the help of someone weaker, as crazy as that might sound. Today, for example, if not for Bai Zemin being the leader of a faction, even though he could have faced the zombie leader and the beast leader, the battle would definitely not have been as smooth as it had been. As Bai Zemin and Lilith chatted, Shang Yun Bing Shu listened quietly. So the reason why he set out on faction building was not because he wanted to, but because this woman told him to. Shang Yun Bing Shu sighed inwardly. Slowly but surely, she was realizing that Lilith's influence over Bai Zemin was indeed big. But after a few moments of consideration, Shang Yun Bing Shu felt that it was only natural since Lilith had been there for him when there was no one by his side. Unlike Shang Yun Bing Shu, who had Wu Yijin and Chen He, Bai Zemin was completely alone at the beginning of all this hell. He, unlike her and many others, had no one to confide in since even before the appearance of the soul record he had no friends. In those moments of loneliness and darkness, the existence of Lilith for him should have been no different than a beacon of bright light illuminating his path. Therefore, it was no wonder that he listened to her so much and held her in such high esteem, regardless of her strength. By the way, let me hold the little pink dolphin you carry in your embrace. Suddenly, Shang Yun Bing Shu's little ears twitched in an extremely cute manner when she heard certain words that attracted her attention. Although she did not look to her side to see what was going on, she was completely attentive now. This Bai Zemin hesitated when he heard Lilith's request and subconsciously looked at the little pink dolphin that seemed to be sleeping comfortably in his arms. He couldn't help but remember what happened when Shang Yun Bing Shu tried to take Xiao Xiao away earlier and couldn't help but wonder if the same would happen with Lilith. What, you won't let me hug her? Lilith pouted and looked at Bai Zemin with eyes brimming with reproach. She should be fine, oh? Bai Zemin said to himself trying to convince himself without much success about it. Somehow, he felt a bad premonition, and his instinct told him that it was better not to let Lilith hold the little animal. However, seeing the little girl look Lilith was giving him, Bai Zemin forced to tell himself that he was probably overthinking things. Well you better be careful, Bai Zemin said as he held the little dolphin underneath the fins, and slowly moved her tiny body towards Lilith, in an attempt not to wake her up. Of course, I'll be careful. Lilith rolled her eyes for a second before reaching out her hands to hold the little pink dolphin. She had been haunted by the beauty of this charming little female gendered animal, from the first moment she had seen her. However, she had managed to resist the temptation while chatting with Bai Zemin to catch up, and while teasing Shang Yun Bing Shu. But now that everything had calmed down a bit, Lilith finally couldn't take it anymore, as her urge to want to hold little Xiao Xiao completely overwhelmed her, and she finally made a request. Seeing how Lilith held the little animal in her embrace and nothing happened, Bai Zemin let out an audible sigh of relief that Lilith did not understand. Shang Yun Bing Shu looked at Lilith with envy, as her eyes were full of complaint, when she looked at the little Xiao Xiao. This little animal was really beautiful, and she wanted to hold her to pamper, but what she received in return for her good intention was a stream of freezing water, but here was this hateful woman, succeeding without a problem. However, things were not as simple as they seemed to be. So cute Lilith murmured in a soft voice as she stared at the small animal that had her little eyes closed and was sleeping happily with a slight smile on her mouth. Lilith's ruby-colored eyes sparkled brightly as she looked at little Xiao Xiao, and it was as if she had discovered some kind of treasure already, as even while walking, she couldn't take her gaze away from the dolphin. But Lilith and the rest had not taken more than a few steps when suddenly little Xiao Xiao's body shuddered fiercely, as if a wave of electric current had suddenly hit her. Her deep pink eyes opened wide, and she didn't look sleepy at all, as her big eyes stared at Lilith. Lilith had no idea what was going on, but Bai Zemin and Shang Yun Bing Shu clearly knew this kind of reaction. As Lilith wondered what was going on with the cute little animal, Shang Yun Bing Shu's eyes shined brightly, as if a star-studded galaxy that seemed to have died came back to life, and in slow motion, her lips began to curve upwards. Watch out! Bai Zemin unconsciously shouted as if the end of the world was approaching. Eh? Just as Lilith looked at him in confusion as it was absolutely impossible for an enemy with murderous intent to slip out of her detection, the little pink dolphin she was holding appreciatively just centimeters away from her face suddenly puffed out her cheeks like a squirrel keeping nuts in its mouth. By the time Lilith realized what was happening, it was too late. The little pink dolphin opened her mouth wide and moved her head forward as if she were heading a soccer. 
Then, a large jet of cold water came out of her mouth, and at such a close distance, and without having expected such an attack, since she could not sense any malice at all from Xiao Xiao, Lilith received the jet of water directly in the face. Bang! Bai Zemin didn't know where all that water was coming from, but little Xiao Xiao continued to spurt water from her mouth for more than five seconds, before she finally ran out of fuel. Xiao Xiao Xiao's chest area slowly returned to normal, and her puffy cheeks lost puffiness quickly, until they finally returned to normal. Poo 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 poo. Xiao 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 shouted something in a high-pitched voice while looking at Lilith, as if she was furious. Then, as Lilith stood there silently as if frozen with her eyes closed, the little pink dolphin took the opportunity to break free from her grip, and with a beautiful swoop returned to the hands of Bai Zemin, who subconsciously caught her. Bai Zemin. Xiao Xiao. Lilith, Shang Yun Bing Shu. Ha 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 ha. As Bai Zemin looked at Lilith dumbfounded and little Xiao Xiao closed her little eyes comfortably again, and as the victim of all this stood there with her eyes tightly closed with cold water dripping down her body, Shang Yun Bing Shu couldn't even fight the urge to laugh, which after a mere second was released with all her forces. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse. Chapter 552 A Mystery That Would Last for a Long Time. Reincarnation and Pure Soul Chapter 552 A mystery that would last for a long time. Reincarnation and Pure Soul The times that Bai Zemin had made Shang Yun Bing Shu smile from the bottom of her heart during the last few weeks were not few, certainly, more than the times she had smiled unburdened counting many years from back to front. He had even made some comments or performed certain actions that had caused her to laugh out loud without caring at all about her image. However, this was undoubtedly the first time Shang Yun Bing Shu smiled and laughed out loud from the depths of her soul. The temptation was so great that she was not even able to stand firm, and with staggering steps she moved from left to right, as her laughter sounded like an angelic song in the middle of the sea. I can't ha 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 my stomach hurts? Ha 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 ha? Shang Yun Bing Shu brought both hands to the abdominal area of her armor, as she writhed between laughter and tears. She did not look at all like a person worthy of the title of Ice Princess, and looked more like a normal teenager or a young adult who had heard a good joke from a friend. But how could she not laugh like this? Even if she died from laughing so much, at least she would die with a happy smile on her face, and a beautiful picture as her last memory. Lilith, that hateful woman, had been pestering her ever since she first appeared before her. Not only had she made comments that evoked her anger, but she had even physically abused her, she had spanked her backside and even touched her bosoms. Any other living being would have found themselves cut into millions of tiny pieces by now. However, Lilith was in a completely different league, which was why Shang Yun Bing Shu temporarily had to put up with it. She would punish her appropriately in the future for now, this backlash that hateful woman had just suffered, would be enough to placate Shang Yun Bing Shu's discomfort for a bit. As Shang Yun Bing Shu laughed out loud without a care in the world, Bai Zemin looked at Lilith not knowing how to react. The Lilith that Bai Zemin had known as a proud, arrogant, confident, compassed, playful, joking, and noble-looking existence, was nowhere to be seen. Although her silky smooth black dress seemed to be made of some special material as the water did not wet it, and simply ran over the surface until it finally reached the ground, her inky black hair was completely soaked and disheveled. Furthermore, her face and some of the visible white skin of her swan-like neck were so wet that not even a drop of water would fit there anymore. Th this Bai Zemin reached a hand forward with the intention of touching her shoulder gently, but after he considered it better, he retracted his hand back. Lilith still had her eyes closed and her mouth tightly sealed. She had not moved from that place for several seconds, and her breathing seemed to have completely stagnated as the only movement around her were the drops of water sliding silently down her body and onto her dress. Bai Zemin felt it best not to touch her right now, just in case. Wouldn't it be a pity if she subconsciously or in a fit of rage slapped him to death? Therefore, Bai Zemin wisely stood there waiting for the moment of truth. This is something I didn't expect. Lilith finally opened her mouth to speak. Bai Zemin tensed as he watched her slowly opening her eyes. However, he calmed down when he did not notice anger or any negative emotion in her eyes, and unconsciously let out a sigh of relief. Lilith glanced at Shang Yun Bing Shu sideways, and seeing her practically twisting with laughter, said weakly, Hey, little bitch. Haven't you laughed enough already? Ha ha ha? The response Lilith received was more and more laughter. Shang Yun Bing Shu even looked at her and pointed her finger as she laughed carefree at the world around her. Bai Zemin began to sweat bullets as he watched Shang Yun Bing Shu behaving in this manner. Although she looked beautiful even as she laughed carelessly, he couldn't help but wonder if this woman wasn't afraid of death. 
HMPH. I'll see how you laugh when you hear tonight how by Zeman and I play in bed. Lilith Coley snorted as a wave of hot mana dried her body in an instant, returning her appearance to that of a few seconds ago, as if what had actually happened was nothing more than an illusion. Shang Yu and Bing Xu suddenly seemed to receive some kind of different stimulation, as if some kind of drug had been injected into her body. She immediately froze, and the laughter she was letting out nonstop came to a spontaneous halt. She looked at Lilith with indifferent eyes, and a chill flashed across her gaze. Pal Lilith sneered, and as if trying to show off herself, she shook her hair with a hand as she looked at Shang Yu and Bing Xu, like a queen looking at a commoner. Seeing the short but fatal exchange between the two beauties, the corner of Bai Zeman's mouth twitched a couple of times as he thought on the inside that women were really strange creatures since, even though Shang Yu and Bing Xu was angry, he didn't really feel any malicious intent on her part towards Lilith. Bai Zeman could not even sense anger in Lilith's words or in her tone of voice, only mockery and slight contempt. Could it be that these two women were on the path of friendship? Such a question naturally popped into his mind. Although it was strange how two women could become friends through words full of mockery and bone-chilling looks, Bai Zeman still remembered the wise words his dear father said to him just before Bai Zeman left for college. Don't try to understand a woman, just go with the flow. Just like fighting against the current, trying to understand a woman's train of thought will only drag you to the bottom when you get tired of trying. Just as Bai Zeman was silently praising his father for enduring so many years of marriage, without letting the smile disappear from his face for even an instant, Lilith looked in his direction. Lilith, forgive her. Xiao Xiao is just a baby dolphin after all. Bai Zeman noticed Lilith's red eyes focused on the little animal in his embrace, so he immediately tried to explain while tightening his hug. Considering that Lilith had just been attacked by Xiao Xiao, she could easily counterattack now without breaking the rules that bound her. However, Bai Zeman knew that Xiao Xiao had not actually attacked Lilith with the intention of hurting her at all, and was only expressing her own dislike towards Lilith in the only way she knew how. Instead of responding to Bai Zeman's words, Lilith looked him deep in the eyes and said in a slightly serious voice, Bai Zeman, since this little animal seems to feel so at ease with you, then why don't you better keep her? As the three of them started the walk again, Bai Zeman looked at Lilith with surprise, as he didn't believe that she would say such words just for the sake of saying. Did you find out something? He asked in a low voice. Shang Yu and Bing Xu also seemed more interested in this matter, as apparently the fact that she had received a splash of cold water on her face might not be as simple as it seemed. Lilith glanced sideways at the little pink dolphin who had gone back to sleep peacefully and without a care in the world. She turned her gaze forward and said calmly, no, it's nothing. At least for now I can't say for sure. But, I think that little dolphin of yours might come in handy later besides, having an aquatic mount won't be bad in the future, right? Bai Zeman didn't know whether to laugh or cry, after hearing how Lilith already seemed to have taken it for granted that he would keep Xiao Xiao. Besides, when he imagined himself wearing full body armor and wielding a giant sword while riding on the back of a pink dolphin, Bai Zeman almost fell to the ground. Forget it, Xiao Xiao is friends with the mermaid princess after all. Bai Zeman shook his head and sighed, regardless of how great she may be or what mysteries this little spirit dolphin hides, kidnapping an intelligent being and taking her away from her loved ones is something I can't do. Although he had no qualms about slaughtering and was even willing to annihilate entire races for the sake of completing his goal, this only applied as long as everyone involved was an obstacle of some sort to his plans. Otherwise, Bai Zeman would definitely not stain his hands with blood. As for kidnapping honestly, Bai Zeman felt that doing such a thing was not only beneath him, but also believed that carrying out such an action would leave a stain on his soul that he would never be able to erase. Well, we'll see what fate has in store. Lilith shook her head and said nothing despite feeling that Bai Zeman was being stubborn for nothing. Besides, if Lilith's thoughts were not wrong, the fact that the little pink dolphin in his arms still kept her eyes closed with a satisfied smile meant that what he was doing was the right thing to do. Xian Meyer didn't know, Xiao Xiao didn't know, Bai Zeman didn't know, Shang Yun Bing Xu didn't know probably no one on earth or in the seas of this world had any idea how strange Xiao Xiao's developmental path was. If Lilith was not wrong, the little pink spirit dolphin was probably capable of subconsciously perceiving the souls of other existences. Lilith believed that Xiao Xiao had the ability to realize when a soul was pure as white snow with no imperfections, and that it was probably because Bai Zeman possessed a pure spirit with no real evil intentions that she felt so comfortable and warm being with him. Lilith looked at Bai Zeman out of the corner of her eye, and a glint of surprise flashed in her eyes. 
it was hard for her to believe that a relatively advanced age like him, Bai Zemin actually had such a pure soul free of imperfections. In fact, he can be the reincarnation of serious heavenly wolf in any way. Lilith reasoned in her heart as she narrowed her eyes. A flicker of confusion flashed in those two beautiful gems-like eyes of hers as she silently thought. If Bai Zemin was a reincarnation, then his soul definitely shouldn't be so pure. It is practically impossible for a living being to maintain a pure soul after the first few years of life, since as the years go past the world always runs us down in some way or another, let alone a living being who experienced more than one life. According to the little knowledge Lilith had about it, Sirius Heavenly Wolf was an existence that stopped at nothing for the sake of becoming stronger, so despite having a small circle of very close friends, his enemies were even more, and even his friends were a bit wary of him. Of course, these were all things that Lilith had heard since Sirius Heavenly Wolf was an existence that went too far back in time for her to know with certainty. However, even if Sirius had been a saint during his previous life, Lilith did not believe that after living thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of years, the Heavenly Wolf had been able to keep his soul and mind pure. But in that case, what about the reaction of Sirius' constellation? Lilith frowned slightly before shaking her head slightly and deciding that she would discuss the matter further with Bai Zemin, when things settled down a bit more. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse Chapter 553 New Victim? Chapter 553 New Victim? When Bai Zemin and Shang Yun Bing Shu appeared in the vicinity of the base, they immediately noticed several dozen auras closing in on them, all of these auras belonged to soul evolvers, and all of them were relatively powerful. However, the ones that stood out the most were only a handful. It's probably Yijin's handiwork. Shang Yun Bingxu pointed out as she looked ahead, the walls of the base finally coming into her line of sight. Before returning to the bridge, I explained approximately the situation to her, she probably mobilized some troops just in case. I see. Bai Zemin nodded with appreciation flashing in his gaze. Although he would never allow a powerful enemy to slip from his attack net, nothing was 100% certain. If a zombie or mutant beast managed to evade his detection range and break out of his attacks to reach the human base in Baquin camp, then a disaster so great that over 70% of the base could fall, if the defenses did not react in time would likely occur. Swoosh. Suddenly, a gentle breeze of warm air like that blowing in springtime, hit by Zeman straight on, and he soon saw a beautiful woman running at full speed in his direction. She was Wu Yijin. Arriving in front of Bai Zemin and Shang Yun Bing Shu, Wu Yijin hurriedly stared at the two of them for several seconds, and it was only after confirming that the two of them looked fine, that she let out a deep sigh of relief. You two how can you two be so selfish? Were the first words that came out of her mouth. The eyes of Wu Yijin became tearful as she looked at Shang Yun Bing Shu, and said in a soft but clearly angry voice, Bing Shu, you are too selfish, you left me here in charge of everything while you went off to fight at the front. Did you even consider how I would feel? Shang Yun Bing Shu looked at Wu Yijin, but even though she tried to find words to say, all she could think of was to give a sincere apology. After all, regardless of how irrational her words were, Wu Yijin was speaking from the heart and was therefore right. Just imagining her loved ones going off to fight a deadly war from which they might well never return, while she could only stay at home waiting for the final verdict, made Shang Yun Bing Shu shudder inside. Therefore, she simply lowered her head and smiled bitterly in her heart. Seeing that Shang Yun Bing Shu did not say anything, Wu Yijin bit her lower lip slightly and looked at Bai Zemin. Her eyes were still filled with tears, and it was clear that she was barely holding them from sliding down her beautiful baby face. You're selfish too, she said in a voice as light as a whisper being carried on the wind. She looked into his eyes with a gaze as soft as the spring breeze on a warm day as she said gently, I told you, I love you, and I know this might sound childish, but could you please be a little more considerate about my feelings for you? Wu Yijin smiled bitterly and said in a self-deprecating voice while looking aside, I know well that you don't feel anything for me, and I know well that this might sound annoying to you, but I hope you can understand me. Knowing that you were fighting on the front lines for days without sleep, knowing that you could fall at any moment. It's not a particularly pleasant feeling to feel as if my heart is being squeezed by a rock every second harder than the last. Invisible to the eyes of everyone, Lilith looked at Wu Yijin. Her eyes were soft as was the smile that beautifully adorned the corner of her mouth. After several seconds, she looked at Bai Zemin and waited she waited as she also wanted to see how he would handle this. Had that cold head and cold-hearted Bai Zemin matured a little more during the time she was not present? Had he managed to control his emotions more and over-carry the stone heart skill? Or had his strength been the only thing that had matured in him? 
Soon, the answers to all these questions would come to light, and Lilith was eager to know them. Baizemin closed his eyes for a few seconds after hearing the words of Wu Yijin, that more like complaints, sounded more like pleading from someone who was only asking for comprehension. If it were in the past, it would probably be impossible for me to understand how you feel in fact, right now, I probably only understand a part of how you feel. Bai Zemin began to speak. His voice was also low and soft as memories flashed in his mind. But not long ago, I experienced how ugly it feels to have a loved one disappear just like that, just without further ado. So, I think I can now say that this feeling is truly one I would prefer not to experience again. While Lilith smiled bitterly as she realized that Bai Zemin was talking about what she had done, and that it seemed she would have to work a little harder in the time to come, Shang Yun Bing Shu looked at him with complicated eyes, as she was now aware that the loved one he was talking about was the woman she had recently met. Bai Zemin opened his eyes and looked at Wu Yijin in a serious manner, while his earnest voice expressed his most honest thoughts. To be honest with you, I can't guarantee that in the future such things won't happen even less so when it comes to finding my family, but I can at least promise to tell you beforehand when I'm heading out to do something relatively dangerous. Regardless of whether Wu Yijin consented or not, this was the most that Bai Zemin could do after putting himself a bit in her shoes, due to the fact that he had experienced something somewhat similar when Lilith simply departed without saying much more. However, even though his words were a bit hollow, to Wu Yijin, they were a pleasant surprise as her eyes lit up, after all, she had not expected him to make such a commitment as regardless of his strength, neither Wu Yijin nor anyone else had the qualifications to ask him for explanations of any kind, considering that Bai Zemin was a free soul with no strong restrictions binding him to anyone in particular. That's more than enough. Wu Yijin smiled brightly before her eyes curved slightly like a crescent and said, at least for now I'll accept it. After a brief moment in which Bai Zemin felt amazed at how beautiful was the innocent-like beauty of the woman in front of him, whose tear-filled eyes gave them the appearance of precious sparkling diamonds, he smiled slightly and shook his head after understanding the meaning of her last words. Bai Zemin did not tell her that she should put aside her feelings for him, nor did he tell her that it was unlikely that she would ever get into his heart, these were all things that he had already expressed to Wu Yijin in the past, and that repeating them would only end up hurting her. He believed that as smart as Wu Yijin was, she was probably aware of these facts. For now, Bai Zemin simply decided to let fate take its course. Yesterday cannot be changed and tomorrow is unknown. The only thing we have under our control and only to some extent is today. Bai Zemin muttered with his eyes closed. Em? What's that? Why are you suddenly getting poetic? Shang Yun Bing Shu looked at him in confusion. However, in her eyes there was also a tinge of satisfaction, she was really happy with the way Bai Zemin had handled things this time. No, it's nothing. Bai Zemin shook his head and said with a faint smile, I was just repeating words my mother often said when I was a child, that suddenly seemed to fit into this situation. This situation? Wu Yijin and Shang Yun Bing Shu said at the same time. The two looked at each other in confusion, but Bai Zemi did not respond, and instead started to walk towards the base while saying, let's go, let's move. We have a lot of work to get done. The two childhood friends looked at each other again before shrugging their shoulders and following him from the sides a few steps behind. Standing behind them all, Lilith watched the backs of the three slowly walking away, and a smile of pride naturally took shape on her authorly face. She was proud of Bai Zemin's growth, he had not only grown physically and spiritually but also sentimentally, which was undoubtedly a good sign. The more emotions Bai Zemin showed, the more relieved Lilith felt because only then she could be sure that he would not end up walking a path of no return, in which only sadness and suffering awaited not only him, but also all those who considered him precious. Emotions were undoubtedly dangerous. Let's take love as an example. If the love we feel were reciprocated, then we would surely become the happiest people in the world. On the other hand, if the love we felt was not reciprocated, we would probably be depressed for a long time, just like feeling drowned in a pit of darkness. But what would happen if your love was reciprocated and, for reasons beyond you, his or her life was lost? What would you become at that moment? A lonely spirit or perhaps a vengeful spirit? Regardless of the possible future consequences, Lilith honestly hoped that Bai Zemin would advance to become a sentient being and surrounded by beings who cherished him from the bottom of their hearts, and not a war machine that could only kill every time he took a step forward amidst eternal loneliness. By the way, what's the matter with that little dolphin you're carrying there? The corner of her mouth twitched a couple of times when she heard the voice of Wu Yijin from a distance. 
However, Lilith suddenly seemed to think of something as she hurriedly followed the trio who had walked away while she was lost in her inner thoughts. This her name is Xiao Xiao. She'll be staying with us for a few days, I guess. Bai Zemin said somewhat unsure of how to respond to her question. Oh? She looks so cute how about letting me hug her a little? Wu Yijin also didn't seem to be immune to little Xiao Xiao's charms after all, since after her anxious heart calmed down, thanks to Bai Zemin's words, she couldn't take her eyes off the little pink-colored animal. About that Bai Zemin broke into sweat bullets and subconsciously looked at Shang Yun Bing Shu, as if he was asking her for help. Shang Yun Bing Shu naturally caught Bai Zemin's eyes and of course, she also understood the reason why he fell caught between a rock and a hard place. If he said no, no matter what kind of reasons he gave, Wu Yijin would probably feel a little hurt even if she said nothing. The heart of a maiden in love was too fragile when it came to her lover, and even more so, considering that Bai Zemin was the first and only man she had ever loved in her entire life until today. On the other hand, could Bai Zemin say yes? Considering that so far Xiao Xiao had spewed ice water in the faces of the two other existences besides Bai Zemin, that it touched her, it was highly likely that Wu Yijin would become the third victim of this deadly little animal. Yijin, forget it. Shang Yun Bing Xu tried to intervene, this little dolphin really doesn't seem to love anyone but Bai Zemin, she even splashed cold water on my face when I tried to hug her. While it was embarrassing to admit and bring to light what had happened, Shang Yun Bing Shu could not let Wu Yijin stay in the dark and suffer calamities later. Therefore, she did not hesitate to tell the truth of what had happened. Hava Wu Yijin laughed merrily and while looking at her good sister with amused eyes said, to think that even you would suffer at the hands of a cute animal, even though you like them so much. Shut up, girl. Shang Yun Bing Shu snorted with a slight blush on her face. But, it's okay why even if Bing Xu was rejected by Xiao Xiao, it doesn't mean that I will also suffer the same fate Wu Yijin stretched out her hands towards Bai Zemin, and said with a smile as pure as a newborn's, I think this little one, and I will be able to get along well. Just let me try at most and shall throw some cold water on me, right? I can take so much. This? About that? Bai Zemin and Shang Yu and Bing Xu exchanged glances, and both noticed the helplessness in each other's eyes. While what Wu Yijin said was true, the problem here was that not only Shang Yun Bing Shu had suffered at the hands of Xiao Xiao, even Lilith had gone through a hard time. But it wasn't as if they could announce Lilith's existence casually either, so now they were in a dilemma. Moreover, judging from the expression on the face of Wu Yijin, it seemed that the stubborn girl would not give up no matter what. Shang Yun Bing Shu sighed and looked at Bai Zemin before nodding slightly, just just give the dolphin to her for a second. If you say so. Bai Zemin looked at Wu Yijin apologetically and slowly stretched his arms forward with the intention of letting her hug the little pink dolphin. Wu Yijin was confused by Shang Yun Bing Shu's words and even more confused by the strange look Bai Zemin was giving her. However, she shook her head and continued with the idea of hugging the little dolphin, no matter what as her cuteness was too much to be ignored. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse, Chapter 554 Transcendent Faction Colossal Strength Increase, Part 1, Chapter 554 Transcendent Faction Colossal Strength Increase, Part 1, Wu Yijin felt the softness of the little pink dolphin's body from the first instant her hands came in contact with little Xiao Xiao. The feeling transmitted from her hands was so delicate that she could not get enough of it. However, instead of immediately starting to hug Xiao Xiao, Wu Yijin lifted her little body with both hands until Xiao Xiao's little head was aligned at the level of her head and carefully observed her closed eyes. As if sensing something or perhaps noticing the change as she had done before, Xiao Xiao opened her eyes. However, unlike the previous times, this time her eyes opened gradually, slowly and little by little, as she fought against the sleepiness that covered her senses almost completely. You seem to like to sleep a lot, don't you? Wu Yijin said with a beautiful smile on her face, as she watched the little pink dolphin's eyes take a while to focus on the reality before them. Xiao Xiao blinked her big eyelids several times as her two pink eyes looked intently at the two black eyes that glittered like perfect gems inches away. Yu Xiao Xiao let out a low sound as she tilted her head in a cute manner, her gaze still fixed on Wu Yijin, seemed to wander between two sides difficult to comprehend. Do you even make cute sounds like that? Wu Yijin smiled sweetly and in a quick movement, brought her lips to Xiao Xiao's forehead and planted a soft kiss there. Bai Zemin and Shang Yun Bing Shu watched in stupefaction as the little pink dolphin twitched slightly in Wu Yijin's arms. Neither of them seemed to be able to believe what they were seeing. This why isn't Xiao Xiao throwing cold water on Yijin like she did with me? 
Shang Yun Bingxu couldn't help but ask in a slightly jealous voice. You ask me, but who am I supposed to ask? Bai Zemin forced a smile and shook his head as he watched the scene before him, without understanding what the matter at hand was. Wu Yijin chuckled, but just then Xia Xiao finally used some of her strength as a second-order existence to free herself from her grasp, and with extraordinary ability returned to Bai Zemin's arms. After being in his arms again, Xia Xiao seemed to be feeling something for several seconds, before finally nodding as if she was satisfied with that something, and closed her eyes again with a warm expression on her little face. Wu Yijin looked a little sad at the loss of that beautiful soft feeling, but after a second, she seemed to regain her mood to the max, as with a beautiful smile she said enthusiastically, Oh, good. At least I didn't get a splash of cold water on my head he. Yu Shang Yun Bing Shu looked at her best friend, not knowing whether she should feel happy about her achievement or feel bad about it. She smiled bitterly and said in a clear voice, Is it necessary to throw salt on others' deep wounds? Haha. <laughs> While Wu Yijin and Shang Yu and Bing Xu were chatting with each other, Bai Zemin followed them to the base. He caressed Xiao Xiao's body gently as he thought to himself, TSK, 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 this daddy here is so charming that even dolphins can't escape from me. If Lilith were to know his thoughts, she would probably roll her eyes at his ever increasing narcissism. However, she was too busy staring at Wu Yijin's back, and judging by how distant her gaze seemed and how lost her eyes looked, it was clear that Lilith had too many things on her mind to think about and analyze to worry about small matters. Bai Zemin couldn't care less if the world collapsed right now as he himself was about to collapse. Therefore, after saying a few words to Shang Yun Bing Xu and Wu Yijin, he simply went to his room and fell asleep on the spot. Bai Zemin was so mentally and physically tired that he did not even bother with the fact that he had not taken a shower in more than two days, and so, as he was dressed, he plunged into the world of dreams, as soon as his body touched the comfortable double bed. He was not only suffering from exhaustion, but the damage in his soul, similar to the tearing of a muscle as a result of forcing things too much, was so painful that even with his willpower, it was not easy to maintain an indifferent expression and fight to the death against such powerful existences as the zombie leader and the beast leader had been. Taking the opportunity, Lilith silently and carefully removed the top of Bai Zemin's leather armor. Considering that the armor was already quite battered, she assumed that he would soon be discarding it, so she didn't worry too much about its care, but mainly focused on not waking the charming prince from his dreams. She didn't do anything perverted at all, unlike her constant sexual teasing towards Bai Zemin. On the contrary, her face was quite serious as she looked at his naked upper half. Lilith reached both hands forward and felt his skin. Her soft hands ran over his firm chest and perfect abs that seemed to have been sculpted by the hand of the gods, and after almost a full minute she finally stopped. This physical body is definitely insane for a first-order existence. Lilith whispered with wide eyes. Now I understand why Lucifer fearlessly said that even he wasn't capable of facing beings as powerful as the beings that Bai Zemin killed as a first-order existence. This little scoundrel's physique has reached a monstrous level, even though he has been evolving for only a little over two months. Over the years, the number of males Lilith had met were simply too many to count. Some of them had been slaughtered by her, others were simply passengers in her life, and a small minority were allies for some time before for various reasons, each had no choice but to continue on different paths. However, she was 100% certain that no third-order male she had ever met could compare to how perfect Bai Zemin's body was at this point. When it came to physique, it didn't just have to refer to physical strength, speed, etc., there were other aspects such as the toughness of the skin that provided defense without affecting softness to the touch, there was the ability to withstand poison or corrosive type attacks more effectively, etc. A good physique could even negate or suppress status effects a lot faster than normal. They were all small details that normally one would not pay attention to, but with the fact that they were there at all times, when put together they formed a supremely terrifying existence, and Bai Zemin was quickly becoming one. I wonder what level of stamina this little scoundrel has reached now, Lilith whispered and inadvertently blushed slightly at the thought of naughty things. Even she herself was starting to be truly affected by what were once nothing more than naughty jokes to lighten the heavy atmosphere around Bai Zemin. In fact, Lilith hadn't even realized when the nickname Little Scoundrel had become characteristic of Bai Zemin to her. To the surprise of Lilith and many others, Bai Zemin did not sleep, but he sleep. Even after three days had passed he still hadn't woken up at all, and if it wasn't for the fact that his breathing was steady, everyone might have thought that something bad had happened to him. 
Fortunately, every time Shang Yun Bing Shu came to visit him before the day was over, Lilith was there to reassure her and tell her that Bai Zemin's aura was slowly ascending. It seems that this brat suffered a small but at the same time quite deep wound in his soul. Lilith realized this fact 24 hours after Bai Zemin went into a state of deep sleep, as she gradually noticed how his soul power was getting stronger, and considering that he couldn't absorb soul power, as he was currently in the middle of his mission to break through to the next stage, it could only mean that his own soul power was recovering to its natural condition. But Lilith frowned as she looked at Bai Zemin with more and more perplexed eyes, why is his soul deep in a point of Bai Zemin's soul that was far from anyone's reach and vision, a small object released constant rays of black energy, with crimson edges that covered the parts of his soul, corresponding to the stamina and mana stats, thus recovering the tearing those parts had suffered during the excessive use of overlap regeneration. The most noticeable change would be that now, the base had over 3,000 new soul evolvers. Although these soul evolvers were only around level 7 to 8, they were steadily growing more and more. As if the aforementioned was not enough, the number of soul evolvers was increasing at monster speeds, with dozens and sometimes as many as 100 or more joining with each passing day. The more than 3,000 soul evolvers who suddenly appeared in the ranks of humans fighting on the front lines with weapons forged by blacksmiths or treasures from the soul record, were naturally those survivors who previously belonged to the lowest caste of the Baquin camp, and grasped without hesitation the opportunity that the new government gave them. These survivors, under the guidance of former military man Fu Kigang, quickly learned the basics, and while undergoing strict military training to learn to respect and obey the rules to the letter, as well as to react optimally in times of need, Zhongda and Nangongyi took them hunting every day, with virtually no time to rest. In addition, the new flood of unclassified soul stones made the wealth of the base so great that they would temporarily not have to worry in the short term. Therefore, in order to face the impending second evolution of Earth with a greater chance of success, about 300,000 unclassified soul stones were invested. 300,000 unclassified soul stones to divide among around 3,700 soul evolvers meant that each soul evolver received approximately 80 soul stones. With that amount, everyone managed to raise practically all their active and passive skills to the maximum of the unclassified stage at the very least, and those who even started to evolve their skills to the first order were by no means few in number. Seeing how those survivors who were previously no different from vagabonds now lived in comfortable houses and received generous payments depending on their achievements, thus gaining the admiration of countless beautiful ladies. The number of hot-blooded men who enlisted to become soul evolvers naturally skyrocketed, and there were even more than 1,000 soldiers who it was rumored would soon join the ranks of the Blood Spear Legion that was directly under the leadership of the King of Yanking. No one knew who started it, nor did anyone know at what point it happened, however, before Shang Yun Bing Shu or anyone else noticed, the title of King of Yanking fell on Bai Zemin's head, as survivors could often be heard gossiping amongst themselves about how their lives were beginning to improve rapidly thanks to him. Of course, although no one knew how it all started or the exact time, those who were a bit smarter noticed that it all began when a large number of survivors belonging to the original base of the now leader of the Baquin camp joined them three days ago. That's right. All those under Bai Zemin's rule were now in the same place, and the beginner village had finally merged with the Baquin camp. Chapter 555 Transcendent Faction Colossal Strength Increase, Part 2 Halves With the arrival of the slightly more than 10,000 survivors from the beginning village, the original 20,000-plus survivors of the Baquin camp immediately saw a tremendous increase in population that practically equal plus 50% of the previous total. Under the careful planning of minds like Wu Yijin, Lu Xiaoyao, and even Bai Zemin's housekeeper, the integration of survivors went smoothly. In fact, it seemed that the survivors of the Baquin camp were very happy when they noticed that not only was there now more work to be done, which meant more food for them, but that the number of armed troops seen patrolling the streets or on top of the walls was becoming more and more, which meant more security. With the constant influence of those survivors who had lived within the scale of Bai Zemin's power, and who knew well that although there were many rules it was precisely those rules what kept them safe, the original survivors of the Baquin camp began to look forward to what the new ruler was capable of doing. But they did not have to wait long when the subordinates of the King of Yanking proved that they too were outstanding in many respects. The first major improvement was food, this was the most crucial and highlight point apart from the explosive growth in the troops of evolved humans. Previously, the simplest, cheapest, and therefore most popular food among the survivors was rice porridge, which despite being called porridge, was actually mostly a lot of rice juice, since 95% of it was nothing but water. 
However, for some reason, things changed abruptly from one day to the next, and this was clearly not as simple as a change of government or power. The survivors, all of the men regardless of gender, age, or social status in the base, began to eat at least twice a day a large bowl of meat broth. But the crux of the matter was that the meat broth the survivors received daily was by no means common, since the meat being used to feed them was mutant beast meat of at least level 15, while the soul evolvers and soldiers received at least one piece of first-order beast meat every day. At this point, approximately six days after the new government took over and under the orders of the King of Yanking, even a small child of 10 years old possessed stats comparable to those of an adult in good physical condition before the breakout of the apocalypse. The increase in natural stats under the strengthening of the soul and subsequent bodily evolution not only led to the overall strength of each survivor skyrocketing, but also served as a trigger for the eradication of diseases and viruses that inhabited within the human organism. The weak who could barely walk less than a week ago as a result of poor nutrition or who suffered from fever due to viruses attacking the immune system were now full of energy. This also caused another wave of soul evolvers to appear with the intention of joining the Blood Spear Legion, a legion which at this point had become the target of countless hot-blooded youths, who upon seeing the brave warriors carrying swords or spears, as well as large plate or leather armor, hope one day to become one of them, or of men and women who simply hope to contribute in order to further ensure the safety of their loved ones. It was as if humanity had finally awakened from its trance. Despite the dread to zombies or mutant beasts, those who had lost a loved one under the claws of mankind's enemies only wished for revenge, and those who had experienced the hell of feeling their own body slowly devouring their lives as they rotted from hunger did not wish to go through such a thing ever again, even if it meant raising a sword and fighting. Of course, this in no way meant that 100% were now willing to fight. However, the ship that had been stuck in the middle of the sea had finally begun to sail, just as the fierce winds that threatened to bring it down were approaching from behind at full speed, with the second evolution of Earth just around the corner, this awakening undoubtedly came at just the right time. Although the survivors did not understand the reason why they suddenly began to be fed with such precious meat, none of them complained. As for the reason behind it all, this had been the most important first command that Bai Zeman had given, before falling into deep sleep after arriving at the base. With the second evolution of Earth just around the corner, no one knew what changes might occur, and even Lilith did not dare to treat this little blue planet as just another world after all the things she had learned during the last month after having returned to the demonic army, much less considering that only a little more than two months had passed, but this world was already evolving again, even though it should be at least ten years before such a thing would happen. Unfortunately, not everything was 100% perfect. Always, regardless of the era, problems would be present when mankind was experiencing any kind of change, even more so when it was abrupt changes that meant huge changes in the day-to-day -day lives of some who were comfortable with their current lives. On the third day when Bai Zeman returned from the bridge after eliminating the 20 million zombies, along with all the mutant and evolved beasts that had entered into alliance under the planning of the zombie leader and the beast leader, a motorized squad composed of about 100 law enforcement officers left the military base. Each officer mounted a jeep and sped off, blowing up clouds of dust behind them, scattering to different corners of the camp as they followed the route that their superiors had assigned to them. At the same time, the 100 giant speakers that had been temporarily mounted on top of each of the military jeeps began to automatically play a message that kept repeating over and over again. The attention of every citizen is required. This is a command sent directly from the highest leader of the base. Within 48 hours, the entire armed legions and the Legion of Soul Evolvers will begin a large-scale migration movement in a southerly direction. Our leader, Bai Zeman, has single-handedly fought against the 20 million zombies occupying the vicinity of the Eastern Dragon's Back, and after fighting for two days and two nights without rest, he finally managed to eliminate all threats, successfully opening a path to the rest of Beijing, and connecting the Yanking and Changping districts. All those who wish to follow the military and evolve troops are strongly requested to prepare to migrate within the deadline mentioned previously. Keep in mind that at the time of migration the necessary vehicles will be provided for the mobilization of each and every one of you, however, heavy loads exceeding 50 kilograms should be left behind to smooth the movement and avoid taking up space unnecessarily. When the entire message was finished, the recording with Lu Xiaoyao's voice paused for a couple of seconds before going into repeat mode in such a way that the same words and with the same tone of voice were played a second, third, fourth, fifth, and dozens of times until the entire camp successfully received the information that needed to be delivered.
Army Base, hand-to-hand -hand combat training camp. 50% of the Blood Spear Legion had been mobilized, and together with 80% of the armed troops, were in charge of maintaining security around the base, as well as making last-minute explorations in the more distant villages, in search of more survivors, who were perhaps stuck in their homes, as well as in search of more useful resources. The remaining 50% of the Blood Spear Legion were in the training camp, where they were strictly trained daily in the art of hand-to-hand -hand combat, from fighting with their bare hands to fighting with all kinds of bladed weapons. Experienced military men who formerly belonged to the Yanking District Military Base where all kinds of vintage weapons were kept, were the instructors in charge of training the soul evolvers, who, despite being evolvers, actually had no skilled combat experience, and only relied on superior stats to defeat weaker opponents. Furthermore, even though there was a large influx of over 3,000 soul evolvers that suddenly joined the Blood Spear Legion, and even though the number continued to grow rapidly with each passing day, the Transcendent Faction was not short of weapons or armor to provide for their men. The reason? Of course, this was thanks to the invasion of the Asura race. The Transcendent Faction obtained at least 400,000 sets of weapons and armors, such as swords, spears, heavy chains, heavy swords, war hammers, two-handed maces, daggers, shields, bows, leather armor, plate armor, chain mail armor, etc. All this equipment came from the first army that invaded Earth after crossing the Cosmos Gate, and from the advanced troops that Bai Zemin and Shang Yun Bing Shu had defeated on the other side of the portal in Oblong World. Although there were many pieces of equipment that could no longer be used as they were almost completely destroyed, most of them only had some damage, so they were perfectly usable. At least in the short-medium term, it was unlikely that Bai Zemin's faction would suffer due to the lack of equipment. In fact, every piece of equipment they looted from the invaders were rank 1 pieces with at least 100 points of defense or 100 points of physical magic attack power, and among which there were some high-quality pieces that exceeded rank 1 that naturally fell into the hands of important characters with the power to give them real utility, and who would not allow them to go to waste. Standing in the distance, Evangeline, Shen Mei, Nangong Linkson, Fu Shuifeng, Kang Lan, Lu Xiaoyao, and a few others, watched the ongoing training with similar expressions. At this point, even Lu Xiaoyao, who a month ago was nothing more than a spoiled little princess who could do nothing without her father's influence, managed to keep an indifferent expression on her face every time a soul evolver or soldier fell to the ground and cried out in pain after receiving a hard blow. Shen Mei looked at the digital watch on her right wrist, and after several seconds slowly, she said, I guess the message about the migration in two days has already been received by every survivor in the base by now. After returning to the base having eliminated the zombie threat ruling over and in the vicinity of the bridge connecting Yanking District and Changping District, the second of the most important orders Bai Zemin had given was that five days later, from that time onwards, they would be moving south. As for the survivors, there would naturally be some who would not be satisfied. After all, if all the forces capable of fighting and defending against the other races such as zombies and beasts left then the Baekwin camp would be left open and fragile to any attack. Therefore, unless they wanted to die, they would naturally have to follow the armed troops, regardless of whether they agreed or not. Such a thing would naturally arouse the irritation of some people. Although the survivors who were with us from before are unlikely to complain too much since after experiencing a couple of migrations and not suffering losses of any kind, they should know that Bai Zemin will not let them suffer losses within reason. The survivors who did not know him too well and were already settled here will naturally not be happy. Lu Xiaoyao remarked calmly. Yan Tu's death had been a considerable shock to her. After all, to her he had been like an uncle and almost like a secondary father figure. However, while it was impossible not to feel some resentment towards Bai Zemin, Lu Xiaoya had matured a lot after experiencing and seeing with her own eyes how cruel the world was, and therefore she did not hate him to the point of wishing to go against him or longing to harm him, as she knew that it had been Yan Tu who had challenged Bai Zemin, trying to take advantage of the latter's weakened state. Regardless of whether they are happy or not, none of that affects us. Evangeline commented in her usual cold and different voice that sent chills down the spine of anyone who heard her despite her sweet voice. I guess that's true. Lu Xiaoya nodded after a moment of silence. Kang Lan? Fu Shufeng looked at the healer beside him with questioning eyes. I know. She nodded and took a step forward. Now it was her turn to finish the job. Chapter 556 Heart Devourer What is she going to do? Shen Mei whispered quietly as she looked at Kang Lan in confusion. Wait and you'll understand soon. Nangong Linkson smiled weakly as she said with flashing eyes. 
Although Kang Lan's main duty is to heal, and this is also the quality that Bai Zeman most appreciates about her, the reality is that Kang Lan is probably the most mage talented existence among all of the subordinates of Bai Zeman. If we leave Shang Yun Bing Shu aside, maybe, just maybe, Wu Yijin can barely compare to Kang Lan with respect to mana and magic. Oh? Shen Mei raised both eyebrows clearly in surprise. Now, when she looked at Kang Lan again, her eyes were different. After all, she had seen Wu Yijin use her skill to empower and command plants, therefore she knew how powerful she was. Since Shen Mei was new in the faction, there were many things she naturally didn't know, and since Kang Lan was mostly a quiet person who didn't stand out too much, it was hard to associate her with a magic genius. In fact, even those who knew Kang Lan occasionally forgot that apart from healing Kang Lan also had other magic skills, magic powerful and terrifying enough that her enemies would rather face anyone else than her. Not for nothing was Kang Lan's job called Venomous Healer. The name of the main path she had chosen to walk for the rest of her life was the very representation that while she could help she could also be deadly when the situation called for it. Kang Lan took a step forward and closed her eyes for a moment. After a few seconds, her dark eyes slowly opened, and at the same time as a certain rune engraved deep in her soul released a faint purple glow, a magic circle of approximately three meters in diameter appeared above her head. The soul stone on the magic staff of Kang Lan lit up as her mouth opened and chanted in a low voice. Heart devourer. Bang. The magic circle immediately exploded as Kang Lan's words left her mouth, and a large cloud of deep purple color floated just above her head. Although the deep purple cloud was quite beautiful to look at and had a faint sweet smell that seduced the hearts of living beings to feel it, it was actually the most powerful mass control skill that Kang Lan possessed at the moment. Heart Devourer was a poison-like skill that could extend up to 2,000 meters at most under the user's control, but could be taken beyond that if the caster received outside help. This skill could be controlled from a distance by the caster, such that those considered as allies would not receive any damage, even if the poison entered their organism, poison which, as its name suggested, corroded the heart at a rate that depended on the difference between the caster's and the enemy's magic stats. Go! Kang Lan waved her magic staff, and the soul stone on the surface glowed again for a moment. Using mana as a driver and main engine, Kang Lan pushed the deep purple cloud and sent it flying in all directions, north, south, east, west, and their in-betweens. The deep purple cloud became thinner and thinner as it dispersed farther and farther until it reached a point where the entire purple cloud had mixed with the clear air, and except for small glowing particles that were not easy to detect with the naked eye, there was no trace of this dangerous magical poison. After a couple of seconds, the skill Heart Devourer reached its natural imposed limit, so Kang Lan hurriedly called out, I reached my boundary. I'll go first then. Fu Shufeng nodded and quickly pulled out a military radio from his bag. He pressed a button and with his influence as the leader of the 2nd Brigade of the Blood Spear Legion he ordered, Gale Team of the 1st Team of the 1st Battalion of the 2nd Brigade. Activate your skills. Two kilometers away in the four cardinal directions with the hand-to-hand -hand combat training area as the center and yet within the area, forbidden to anyone who had nothing to do with the military, four teams composed of four soul evolvers, each received Fu Shufeng's command and immediately carried it out without question. The wind gust skill was a level 1 unclassified skill without much use, but which many possessed as it was at least somewhat useful to slightly restrain enemies. However, thanks to the large investment of soul stones that had been injected into the soul evolvers of the Blood Spear Legion, all those who possessed Wind Gust were able to take the skill to the next order. After evolving to Mighty Wind Gust, soul evolvers could spend mana to send a great blast of wind like magical energy, using the natural air currents in their favor, and push those wind currents 1500 meters forward. When the soul evolvers of the different teams activated Mighty Wind Gust, the venomous particles of Kang Lan's Heart Devourer skill were immediately dragged 1500 meters further in all directions, with her as the central core, thus breaking the maximum 2000 meters she could reach due to her own limit. Gale Team of the 2nd Team of the 2nd Battalion of the 2nd Brigade Gale Team of the 1st Team of the 2nd Battalion of the 2nd Brigade Gale Team of the 2nd Team of the 2nd Battalion of the 2nd Brigade Fu Shufen gave four orders in a row, and with the use of all the subordinates under his direct command, the skill Heart Devourer was pushed six kilometers, finally leaving the military base. Standing atop one of the base's tallest buildings, Kai Jinji was calmly observing the scene unfolding just below her. Currently, the base was not as peaceful as it was a few minutes ago. Just 200 meters in front of the building Kai Jinji was standing on, a man between 25 and 30 years old, was causing disorder in the streets. 
This man was considerably large, and being fed mutant beast meat for several days, helped his overall power grow at least four to five times compared to the past. These damn bastards want to lead us to our doom or what? The man shouted as he stood in front of a restaurant that was quite popular among the poorer survivors, due to its affordable prices. Since it was usually very crowded by workers at break times, everyone listened to the man's complaints. Many of us have businesses and our lives finally settled down after much suffering. However, this by Zeman who arrived here a week ago at most wants to take away all the armed troops, isn't this the same as telling us all to move or die here? Then, the man suddenly grabbed one of the tables that had been set up by the owner of the place for those customers who preferred to eat outdoors, and threw it against the large window of the restaurant. The glass of the window shattered and the people inside the restaurant panicked. Screams and curses erupted, but the man who was complaining didn't seem to mind as he continued to wreak havoc while grumbling non-stop. Please stop. The owner of the restaurant, a single woman in her early 30s who had lost her son during the first week of the apocalypse, pleaded with panic and tears in her eyes. This restaurant had been painstakingly built by her after depriving herself of food for several days and working hard for more than 12 hours a day. The restaurant was barely three days old from the time of its opening, as the new rule of Baizemin had made things so much easier for this woman who had practically nothing but herself, so seeing everything being destroyed before her eyes naturally left her disheartened and desperate. Why are you complaining? At the end of the day, we'll all have to leave, when we since we'll have to leave our things behind no matter what the conditions. The man scoffed. Kai Jinji's eyes flashed quizzically, but she did nothing to intervene as she watched from a distance. Her small body that was not overly developed for someone her age, but still capable of tempting any man just like the whisper of a demon, was tightly hugged by a deep black leather armor that did nothing but help bring out the charms that a normal piece of clothing could not. As the soft wind caressed her face and made her inky black hair float, Fu Shufeng's voice reached her ears from the military radio she held in her right hand. Kai Jinji, it's your turn. Kai Jinji pressed a button without looking at the radio in her hands and replied in an indifferent voice. Roger. She released the button and pressed another one. Then, Kai Jinji finally brought the military radio to the height of her lips and calmly ordered, Silent Wind Team of the 1st Team of the 1st Battalion of the 1st Brigade. Start. The same thing that occurred before happened. Kai Jinji did not stop and ordered the two teams of the two battalions under her direct command, such that all those with the mighty wind gust skill in the 1st Brigade of the Blood Spear Legion managed to bring Kang Lan's skill to the city. Suddenly and as the restaurant owner fell to her knees with tears running down her face, a surprising change occurred. Stop crying. In the end, you'll be gone in two days too, won't you? The man roared and picked up a chair preparing to continue destroying the restaurant. However, his movement suddenly stalled, and his expression froze. The man involuntarily let go of the chair he had just grabbed and brought his hands to his chest, as intangible sounds came out of his mouth. Barely two or three seconds later, the man's eyes rolled into the back of his head, and under the shocked eyes of everyone in the restaurant or watching from afar, he fell to the ground, never to get up again. What happened? That was the question on everyone's mind as they looked at the corpse slumped on the floor. The restaurant owner's face turned white as a sheet as everyone quickly began to leave as the rules were very strict, any suspect in any incident involving a life would be locked up and questioned properly, and only released once it was proven that the suspect was not involved in any way with the murder. Standing at the top of the building, Kai Jinji pressed another button on the military radio in her hand, and said in her unchanging voice, Zhongda, I'm done here, okay. That was the only reply she received. While the skill heart devourer was spread all over the base and under Kang Lan's control, everyone involved in any kind of security and public order attempt was directly punished with death as a penalty for causing trouble in such a crucial and important moment, as it was a 100% survivor mobilization. No one knew what happened or how it happened, but in a matter of seconds, everyone who was causing trouble of any kind representing vandalism, physical aggression, attempted murder, attempted rape, or any other type of disturbance, died before the eyes of the victims or spectators. Of course, there were also many cases in which troublemakers were shot by police officers, military, or soul evolvers patrolling the area. But since the base was simply too large, it was not possible to be everywhere at all times, precisely because of this, Kang Lan's skill in conjunction with the skills of other soul evolvers was very necessary. On the other hand, Kai Jinji nimbly jumped off the large building she was on, and the wind swiftly swooshed around her as her surroundings became a blur as she plummeted towards the ground. 
Just before hitting the ground, Kai Jinji activated the ability of her own arachnid silk ring, and swung in such a way that as she fell, she did not cause any damage or shock. Her body flashed and before anyone noticed she appeared in front of the restaurant owner. Leather armor, sharp eyes, bearing that exuded someone of power, extraordinary aura, two shining daggers attached to her slender waist, a clearly flexible body capable of performing dangerous movements, Kai Jinji's whole body was the graphic representation of a powerful soul evolver, so the restaurant owner immediately identified her. The restaurant owner's face turned terribly pale, and everyone nearby immediately turned away while pointing at her. Kai Jinji ignored all the people on the street and walked straight to the restaurant. Every step she took was accompanied by the crunch of broken glass being crushed and turned to dust by her boots, adding more nerves to the owner's heart. Are you the owner of this place? Kai Jinji looked at the woman on the ground and asked calmly. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse, Chapter 557 Light and Warmth Amidst the Cold Darkness, Chapter 557 Light and Warmth Amidst the Cold Darkness. Are you the owner of this place? Kai Jinji looked at the woman on the ground and asked calmly. Seeing the appearance of a soul evolver, the woman smiled bitterly and a flash of bitterness shone in her eyes. In the past, all she had hoped for was to live a peaceful life with her son, whom she had laboriously raised after the loss of her husband. However, when the entity known as Soul Record appeared and the apocalypse began, the peaceful life she longed for was not only disrupted, but her only loved one left her soon after. Still, she could not find the courage to die. Therefore, she decided to live for herself and her son. That was why she worked so hard to get here. But what good were all her efforts? She, who had decided to live her part and that of her son, in the end only continued to be punished and repressed, as if in her past life, she had been the cause of countless evils that could only be repaid with her own suffering. Sometimes, she really wanted to ask to the heavens why they were so intent on her suffering. Yes, it's me. The woman responded to the question of the young woman who didn't even appear to be of legal age, due to her petite figure, but whose aura was enough to suffocate her with her presence alone. The voice of the restaurant owner was calm, and her eyes were no longer trembling with fear as they were a few seconds ago. She had decided. This time, she felt that she would be able to put an end to this pitiful and miserable life she had been living. A life filled with suffering could no longer be called life, and was nothing more than a hell of pain, where possibly death was the true reward. However, fate had other things in store for her. I see. Kai Jinji then smiled sweetly, and her slightly indifferent eyes softened faintly. She stepped forward and introduced herself, My name is Kai Jinji, leader of the 1st Brigade of the Blood Spear Legion, under the command of the King of Yanking. I am sorry for what just happened. Our leader is a very fair person so all those people with business will receive compensation upon arrival at the new base, but considering that your place was destroyed, I doubt you will get too much. As such, have this as compensation. Then, under the disbelieving gaze of the business owner, Kai Jinji took something out of her bag and held it out to her. He this is with trembling hands and subconsciously, the woman took the emerald green ticket and tightened her grip on it, as if she couldn't believe it. That ticket should be worth roughly 5,000 kilograms in food. Kai Jinji calmly shot in reply, and, when we arrive at the new base, wait a few days until the logistics team settles down and then go to the head office. Use that ticket to buy a building in a good position and use the rest to set up your business again. The green-colored food ticket was practically at the top of all the tickets, and therefore only people with great status and power within the base could get their hands on one of these. Even for someone like Kai Jinji, it was not an easy task to get her hands on a green ticket, unless she saved for months, and the only reason she had this ticket in her hands was because she had contributed a lot to the faction, as well as her high salary as the main leader of the 1st Brigade of the main and most powerful legion of the entire transcendent faction. With such a food ticket, the owner of the now-ruined restaurant could rise from the ashes just like the legendary Phoenix, once she followed the main forces south and settled down completely. If she was smart enough, she would just have to wait and see which would be the next most popular avenue in the new base, and buy a storefront there before setting up a business that in time would surely make her a millionaire within the Bai Zeman's power system. However, there was one drawback that depending on how it was handled could be a major or minor one, but if left the way it was now would undoubtedly become the restaurant owner's undoing. 
The number of eyes that gathered on the emerald green ticket in the hands of the restaurant owner were so many that she could almost distinguish the emotions each of them felt, just based on the way they looked at her, or the light that illuminated their eyes, envy, greed, malicious intent, jealousy, and many other negative emotions pricked the body of the restaurant owner in such a way that her entire being shuddered for a split second. Fortunately for her, not only had Kai Jinji been a student of international relations in the past, but throughout her life, thanks to having lived in various parts of the world, she had met many different people. Moreover, having been sharpened by the cruelty of the apocalypse, the current Kai Jinji was in no way the same timid and fearful student she had been until not long ago. Having ended the lives of so many beings of different races, Kai Jinji possessed a sharp killing intent that, while it had no way to compare to Bai Zeman's thick killing intent, was powerful enough for her to sense when someone else released killing intent near her. So, it was not at all difficult to realize the present problem. It was clear that if she leaves now and left things like this, the restaurant owner would not only not come to exchange the ticket later, but she would probably not survive to see the sun of the coming day, because while the rules were strict, human beings were greedy by nature, and the temptation that a green food ticket held was simply too great to pass up. This was even more so when such a treasure was in the hands of a weak and harmless woman who could be bullied by anyone. Kai Jinji snorted under her breath and looked at a specific corner across the street where there was a dark alley. You two, come here. At first, all those watching from a distance were confused because when they looked for the same spot that the female soul evolver was looking at all they saw was a patch of darkness belonging to the dank alley where the rays of light could not easily penetrate. However, a moment later, two silhouettes emerged from the shadows like ghosts and appeared before everyone. One of them was a young teenager of about 16 to 17 years old, and the other was a mature woman of about 39 to 40 years old. Both were equipped with leather armor but differed in their weapons, as while the young teenager carried a normal sword, the woman had a shield that was almost as big as her body on her back, and a whip wrapped around her waist. Both of them were first-order existences that had managed to advance during the last period of time, and were among the top ranks of the Blood Spear Legion. Although they could not compare to the core members, the strength of these two could not be ignored, as when the two of them teamed up even a First Order level 40 existence could fall due to the fact that the two of them were perfectly synchronized between ranged attacks, melee, and even defense. Brigade Leader The young teenager and the woman approached Kai Jinji respectfully and waited for orders obediently. They were both mother and son who after losing the rest of their family, began to evolve on their own, and joined by Zeman's faction, about one month after the apocalypse broke out, already being level 20 existences whose power could not be ignored. Lan Zan, Huo Gang. For the next 96 hours, the mission of both of you will be to protect the physical safety of this woman. Kai Jinji pointed at the restaurant owner as she ordered in a slightly imposing voice. 96 hours, which was equivalent to four days of time, should be enough for the eyes that were focused on the restaurant owner to be lost. After all, if someone followed her for all that time they would easily be discovered by people on the level of the mother-son pair, and with the way things were now it was unlikely that this someone had good intentions. However, Lan Zan and Huo Gang hesitated after hearing the order Kai Jinji had given them. This brigade leader Lan Zan did not know how to express her concern and disagreement, since Kai Jinji was her immediate boss. The problem was that they had both been chosen as Kai Jinji's bodyguards, and their duty was to maintain her all-around security. After all, while Kai Jinji was powerful, she was, at the end of the day, only one person and on many occasions, two sturdy arms could not defeat four thinner arms. Although the majority of soul evolvers work for Bai Zeman and his cause, it was impossible to control so many thousands of survivors. Therefore, sometimes a hidden soul evolver would appear and try to kill core members, just because they disagreed with the strict rules of the base. There were not a few times that people such as Kang Lan, Zhang De, and others, faced assassination attempts during the past month and a half, and in some of them the number of enemies, as well as the coordination, served to corner them to the point where they received several injuries in the process. It's okay, you don't need to worry about my safety temporarily. However, Kai Jinji dismissed the duo's doubts easily by saying, during this time, I and the rest of the leaders will mainly be finishing up the preparations to leave for the South, together with the leader. Basically, what she meant was that with existences that were no weaker than her, and with the soul evolver who was practically seen as a divine being by everyone at her side, any attempt to harm her would be over before it began. The mother-son pair looked at each other now more relieved, and this time did not hesitate to nod and agree with the order Kai Jinji had given them.
After giving a few more instructions to the two, Kai Jinji turned into a rush of wind that in a matter of moments, completely disappeared from the side of the crowd, without even caring about opinions, let alone the murmurs she heard before disappearing, as she had to continue scouting the base for troublemakers to help with the elimination. The restaurant owner felt like she was dreaming, but no matter how many times she pinched herself or bit her tongue, the pain felt too real to be a dream. She, who was nothing more than a nobody, had actually met face to face and even exchanged words with one of the noblest existences on the entire base. At this point of the road, all the survivors were aware of the existence of the three legions created by the king of Yanking himself, and among those three legions, the most powerful was undoubtedly the Blood Spear Legion. According to rumors, the king of Yanking had not even bothered to mobilize his three legions, and only by using the power of the Blood Spear Legion, which at that time was much weaker compared to the current one, he was able to easily break through the defenses of the Baekwin camp, just like the sharp tip of a spear piercing through paper shields, to take control of the entire base in less than half a day. It was said that the power of the Blood Spear Legion was so terrifying, that under the leadership of the King of Yanking, it suppressed the soldiers of the base, so much to the point of forcing them into submission, with its overwhelming presence alone. However, she had just received the favor of the top leader of the 1st Brigade, that made up the Blood Spear Legion. She could not believe it. But seeing those two powerful soul evolvers looking around with sharp eyes, the restaurant owner realized that everything that had happened to her was real, no matter how fantasy-like it seemed. She pressed the emerald green ticket and carefully folded it before sliding it into the locket that contained a picture of what was once her family. This ticket, to many, might be a ticket to board a rocket and take off to the heavens, but to her, it represented hope and warmth in the midst of the darkness that almost devoured her, and the coldness that nearly froze her soul. The woman looked at the place where Kai Jinji had disappeared and bowed profusely for a full minute, before straightening her posture and walking towards the side room of the now-ruined restaurant, followed by the two soul evolvers, responsible for her protection for the next few days. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse, Chapter 558 Awakening, Chapter 558 Awakening, Approximately one hour later, back at the military base, specialized closed combat training grounds. As the training of the armed and evolved army continued progressing as usual and without any problems, Kang Lan finally opened her eyes after having kept them tightly closed to get a better focus on the task at hand. She observed the people around her and noticed one person who was previously not there. Jinji, you're here. Kai Jinji smiled slightly and nodded in response, yeah. On my side, I finished to do what Shang Yun Bing Shu instructed me to do and, just as she was speaking, her words were interrupted by the voice of the leader of the 1st Battalion of the 1st Brigade, whose name was Lin Tao, a powerful 1st Order soul evolver, who had been saved from the clutches of two 1st Order beasts by Bai Zeman some time ago, and thus was totally loyal to him coming out of the military radio insider bag. Legion leader Kai, the two teams attached to the 1st Battalion, have succeeded in the complete suppression of all rebels, within the range you ordered us formerly. At this precise moment the troops are patrolling the area and making sure that no more disturbances happen. A similar message followed seconds later, but this time sent by the leader of the 2nd Battalion of the 1st Brigade of the Blood Spear Legion. But this was but the prelude to a series of reports as immediately afterward, the military radio of Fu Shufeng was turned on, and the two leaders of the two battalions of the 2nd Brigade reported to him something similar to the reports Kai Jinji had received seconds before. Judging from the fact that both Fu Shufeng and Kai Jinji received reports at practically the same time, I think it's not wrong to assume that the troops of the Blood Sword Legion Commander and the troops of the Blood Whip Legion Commander are probably close to complete their task by now, if they haven't already finished. Evangeline analyzed as everyone was silent for a moment. The commander of the Blood Sword Legion was none other than Zhang Da, while the commander of the Blood Whip Legion was naturally Chen He who had helped tremendously with the mobilization of the survivors from the beginner village to the Baekwin camp. For this operation and for the sake of ending any kind of plague as quickly as possible, Shang Yun Bing Shu obtained special permission from Bai Zemin, which allowed her to mobilize the entire three legions of the faction in full. While it was impossible to use every single member of the three legions for this operation, as many men were still required to maintain defenses, scout, observe the surroundings, etc., it was more than enough considering that about 1,000 soul evolvers and about 2,500 armed troops and policemen had been mobilized. Approximately two hours later, a large table full of food was served in the main villa under the careful work of the beautiful maids. 
The food that had been prepared by the chefs with the most evolved cooking skill of the entire faction did not lose it all to the most exquisite delicacies of the five-star hotels of the past, not only thanks to the cooking skill, which greatly increased the cooking knowledge and proficiency of those who learned it, but also thanks to the valuable ingredients that had been used. The lowest quality meat was meat that belonged to an iron horned deer whose level was 33, while the most valuable meat could be considered a treasure as it belonged to the surprisingly strong archaic bear of the second order. There were even several vegetables that were discovered and studied by the biology and botany teams, whose flavors made a mockery of all the best and most carefully cultivated vegetables grown by the real experts of the pre-apocalypse earth. Such type of food was of such high quality that only a handful of people who could be counted with the fingers of two hands could afford it in the entire faction. However, considering who were the people gathered around this table, it was not an impossibility. Seated on the right side of the table in the following order. Shang Yun Bing Shu, Wu Yijin, Chen He, Zhang De, Kai Jinji, Fu Shuifeng, Kang Lan, Evangelin, Nang Gong Yi, and finally Fu Kigang. The leaders and vice leaders of the two brigades of the Blood Spear Legion were just below Shang Yun Bing Shu and Wu Yijin, as the first one was the second in command, when Bai Zemin was not present, while the second one possessed the ability to interfere with Shang Yun Bing Shu's orders, if at any time she considered that the first one was not capable of leading. Meanwhile, Chen He and Zhang De were the commanders of the Blood Whip Legion and Blood Sword Legion respectively, so their positions were the closest to the main seat, after Shang Yun Bing Shu and Wu Yijin. Sitting on the left side were people such as Xiaoming, Lu Yan, Lu Xiaoyao, and the rest of the leaders of each battalion of the three legions. Big Brother Bai still hasn't come out of his room? Lu Ning, who was sitting on the left side of the table, asked with a frown. Although she was only nine years old and in the past she was very innocent, she was gradually maturing enough to realize when something was not right. Therefore, she was beginning to see through the lie that Shang Yun Bing Shu had told her before about Bai Zemin being busy with the spoils of war obtained during the purge on the Eastern Dragon's back. No one said anything to the question asked by Luo Ning, and the eyes of everyone automatically focused on Shang Yun Bing Shu's body. In fact, everyone was asking the same question, and many feared the worst, since Bai Zemin had locked himself up immediately after returning from the battle on the bridge. Could it be could it be that the leader really had been severely wounded? As such a question began to grow, the weight on the hearts of everyone present suddenly became unimaginably great, so much so that the atmosphere seemed to freeze for a moment. Shang Yun Bing Shu slowly opened her eyes and carefully observed the expressions on the faces of everyone present. She, who had observed and understood the darker emotions that humans tried to hide, was confident in seeing beyond what their exteriors showed. However, Shang Yun Bing Shu only noticed real concern and even a bit of fear in the eyes of those present, when the idea of Bai Zemin facing grave problems, which was perfectly normal, considering that after having advanced so far they were all in the same boat, a boat which could easily sink if it lost its captain, as many would try to take control over the rudder that Bai Zemin had built. She turned her face to look at the empty seat at the head of the table for several seconds, and as she looked at that place where the true leader was supposed to be, her soft melodious voice broke the silence. There is nothing to worry about. I know that many if not all of you are wondering why Bai Zemin has not appeared for the past three days. Being completely honest, while Bai Zemin came out of the war against the zombie race, and the beast race physically unscathed as his health stat is so monstrous that all his wounds healed in a matter of seconds, the same cannot be said regarding his soul. Soul trouble again? Wu Yijin whispered, and a flash of worry appeared in her beautiful big eyes. Everyone looked at each other in confusion as this was the first time they had heard about someone's soul being damaged. However, for someone who was able to reconnect an arm which had been severed, and who was able to survive and regenerate a fist-sized hole that pierced his body from side to side, to not be able to leave his room for three days in a row, the matter should be very serious. Shang Yun Bing Shu shook her head and continued, everything related to the soul is too far away from people like us, and will probably stay that way for a long time, so let's not think about matters that are beyond our reach. All you need to know is that Bai Zemin is not in danger by any means, and will probably wake up soon, as just before sitting at this table with all of you I went to check on his condition, and judging by his aura he will probably wake up in one or maybe two more days, I am not sure when but definitely soon. About one hour ago, Shang Yun Bing Shu had gone to Bai Zemin's room to see how things were progressing. There, she found Lilith sitting beside him and tenderly stroking his hair. 
While the sight was not particularly pleasing to Shang Yun Bing Xu's eyes, she simply inquired about Bai Zeman's current condition, and after getting the information she wanted, she left the room for fear of losing her mind and destroying the entire villa. That's good. Xiao Ming nodded upon hearing Shang Yun Bing Xu's words and slapped his chest as if relieved as he said with lingering anger, fortunately, and all of us here are trustworthy people, or if some little bastard gets wind of this information, they might try to cause trouble. You saw what happened when that backstabbing dog Yang Tu tried to take advantage of the leader's injuries. Silence reigned after those words left Xiao Ming's mouth, and he noticed several people looking at him with weird eyes. I say, Xiao Ming. Could you be a little more careful with your mouth? Nang Gongyi looked at the man on the other side of the table, not knowing whether he should laugh or cry. More careful? Xiaoming looked at him in confusion. However, as if suddenly thinking of something, he looked to his right and noticed how Lu Xiaoyao was biting her lips, and how Lu Yan was clenching his fists tightly. Ah, was all Xiaoming could say when he realized what was happening. He coughed awkwardly and apologized, Lu Yan, Lu Xiaoyao, I'm sorry about that actually, I didn't mean to offend anyone. It's okay, Lu Yan forced a smile and shook his head, after all, your words weren't particularly false either. Xiaoming was a man who spoke his mind straight out and hated petty machinations, therefore, he completely despised Yang Tu's behavior, this coupled with his practically blind loyalty to Bai Zemin, only served to help him hate this man who had once been his ally, even now that he was dead. Therefore, he did not measure his words when it came to speaking and forgot that Lu Yan and Lu Xiaoyao were basically Yang Tu's relatives. Shang Yun Bing Xu shook her head secretly before cutting off the conversation in an indifferent voice. Let's start the meeting once and for all. First, I want a detailed report on the extent of damage the base suffered once the announcement about the large-scale mobilization to the south was made public. Second, the number of innocent people injured or killed. Lastly, the number of vandals who were killed. And so, the meeting officially began. It was not only about reports, but also about fine-tuning small details for the big mobilization. After all, moving more than 30,000 humans was not easy at all. Meanwhile, on the top floor of the villa, the person who should be in the main seat and taking the reins of the meeting, finally woke up. However, judging by the message that flashed in his retina the moment he opened his eyes, he probably wouldn't have time to go down to the main floor. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse, Chapter 559 Bring Back the Dead and Create Life with a Single Thought, Chapter 559 Bring Back the Dead and Create Life with a Single Thought. He did not know how much time had passed, however, when his eyes that had been closed for an unknown amount of time gradually opened, and his pupils adapted to the sunlight that penetrated faintly through beyond the cream-colored curtains, by Zeman for some reason, felt as if an eternity had passed from the time he opened his eyes to the outside world. Look who's awake. Isn't he the little scoundrel by Zeman? Maybe I should add Big Lazy to my list of nicknames directed and created especially for you. A soft voice, almost like the singing of a small morning bird, sounded beside him. Perhaps it was part of the magic that the hidden beauty of the voice contained, or perhaps it was because Bai Zeman knew perfectly well to whom that beautiful melody belonged, but when he heard it, he felt as if all his worries instantly disappeared, and every burden that constantly threatened to plunge him deep, suddenly seemed to become light and insignificant. I'd rather big lazy. Somehow I feel that little scoundrel is too much for such a pure young man like me. Bai Zeman joked with a faint smile as he looked to his side. There, sitting on the edge of the bed inches away, a woman so beautiful that she could no longer be categorized as a human, was looking at him with a small playful smile, but the relief in her eyes betrayed her true emotions. Lilith looked at Bai Zeman with her face slightly tilted down and to the right. Seeing him finally wake up after so many days, the weight in her heart finally lightened. How are you feeling? How's your soul wound? She asked immediately. How do you know my soul was wounded? Bai Zeman looked at her in surprise as he had never mentioned this to Lilith. However, he soon remembered who he was talking to and smiled bitterly, forget it, I guess it's normal for you to see through an insignificant first-order existence like me. Lilith looked at Bai Zeman deeply and said in a serious voice, I don't think an insignificant existence would have the ability to shake the entire universe, even though it has been evolving for less than half a year. Shake the entire universe? He was. Bai Zeman was dumbfounded and looked at Lilith for answers. However, she gently shook her head and reminded, first check your condition. We'll talk later it won't be a conversation that can be finished in one or two hours. After lowering his head to think about it for a moment, Bai Zeman realized that what Lilith said was true. 
If he had done something so great as to cause her to put such a serious expression on her face and her voice to sound so tense, then it would probably be a long and drawn-out conversation ahead of them. He closed his eyes and began to study his soul. However, even after more than five minutes had passed, he found absolutely nothing strange there. Hey Lilith, M.M., how long does it take for an existence to heal when its soul is wounded? To begin with, I really want to know how your soul could possibly have been damaged, since considering the purity of your soul power, I refuse to believe that a mere normal spiritual attack could possibly accomplish such a feat. But let's leave that for later. Regarding your question, the time it takes for an existence to recover from a soul wound depends on the degree of damage. For example, M.M., correct. Approximately about 10 years ago, I suffered a rather bad wound in my soul, due to the spiritual attack of a beast that overcame me by one stage. At that time, 3% of my soul had been injured, and I needed almost 6 months to fully recover. 6 months to heal from damage equivalent to 3% of the soul? The eyes of Bizemon widened, and he couldn't help but spit out, 6 months for so little damage? How can you be so weak? Lilith looked at Bizemon with strange eyes, and after a moment of silence, she slowly said, Little scoundrel, receiving 3% soul damage, basically means you are 3% dead. Soul damage is very different from physical damage because just as water is the essence that keeps plants alive, the soul is our essence. On many occasions, it is easier to regenerate a limb than it is to heal 1% soul damage, so the fact that I have healed 3% in around 6 months is already a pretty amazing feat. This Bizemon was very surprised to hear Lilith's words, because if what she said was true, then what had happened to him could only be called insanity. His soul was completely healed. Lilith noticed Bizemon's uneasiness, and as she thought of something her expression changed slightly. After everything that had happened during the past month, she no longer dared to consider the young man in front of her as a mere anomaly. Therefore, after considering it for a second, she asked, just out of curiosity but how damaged was your soul? Bizemon hesitated whether to tell her the truth or not, as he didn't want to worry her, now that they had reunited again after living many things apart. However, lies were the beginning of the inevitable collapse of a relationship, hence, Bizemon decided on being honest. I'm not quite sure, but I think about 5% of my soul was hurt. What? Lilith raised her voice, and her whole body turned to face Bizemon face to face. She looked at him with wide eyes and said in shock, 5% of your soul, how can this be possible? Bizemon might not be aware of how hard it was to damage the soul of someone, but Lilith did, and precisely because she was aware of this fact, it was hard for her to accept that an earth existence could damage 5% of Bizemon's soul. However, it was precisely on this point that Lilith was wrong, no one had hurt Bizemon's soul except Bizemon himself. It is not like that, Lilith. He shook his head and said somewhat embarrassed, no one hurt my soul, I self-injured it, while abusing too much of a skill I recently obtained. You what did you say? Lilith felt her heart clench as she muttered in total shock. A skill that should be part of your soul damaged your soul? That definitely doesn't make sense. Skills learned through scrolls obtained after defeating an opponent were immediately fused and converted into runes that with the power of the supreme entity known as Soul Record were blended with the soul of the subject in such a way that said skills and soul were basically one. Therefore, if a skill damaged the soul then all the reasoning Lilith had learned throughout her life would collapse and probably all the higher existences would be shocked to learn that the foundation of what they thought they knew was actually as weak as a paper base. Bizemon naturally understood what Lilith was thinking, since he himself had thought about it before. However, he knew the reason why his soul had been wounded. Actually, it's not the skill's fault. As I said, I overloaded areas of my soul by molding the soul at will. He said as if it was the most normal thing in the world. But Bizemon did not know that what he had just said were words that would immediately make him a lunatic in everyone's eyes or a genius who should be recruited or killed immediately by any of the major factions of higher existences. Overload? mold? Lilith's pupils twitched fiercely as a theory began to take root in her heart. Show me the skill you are talking about. She inquired in an extremely urgent voice and extended her perfect hand. Lilith didn't even wait for Bizemon's reply as she took his hand while staring at him. However, Bizemon was so surprised by this attitude of Lilith that for an instant he froze not knowing what to do as this was the first time he had seen the ever compass Lilith this anxious. Bizemon? Lilith's voice woke him up, and he subconsciously shared his third-order regeneration skill with her. As the green letters representing the records of the skill regeneration began to appear across Lilith's retina, she watched them very carefully for fear of missing something. 
At first, there was nothing too far-fetched, but when Lilith reached to read the second activation her breathing stalled. Now, she finally understood how Baizemon dared to say what he said before. Yu she looked at the young man sitting at a close enough distance to appreciate every detail of his face, and use her free hand to point at him, while her mouth moved non-biasedly, but with no real purpose. Seeing Lilith like this, although Baizemon felt that his small vanity had been fulfilled as he expected to surprise her greatly with his newly acquired skills, he was also very worried as a sixth-order existence should not be surprised to such a magnitude by something a first-order existence had, unless that first-order existence had something that a first-order existence shouldn't have. But in fact, overlap regeneration was not a skill that a first-order existence should possess. No no one should possess such a skill, at least no one alive. Baizemon's regeneration skill was already unlike any regeneration type skill Lilith had seen before, as the skill allowed him to possess practically enough stamina to make a mockery of any army that tried to wear him down. But overlap regeneration it was on another level. How how did you get this skill? Wasn't it that ape from the university? Lilith asked still in shock. Yeah the ape I killed back then managed to regenerate from all the injuries it had suffered, but when I killed it the skill I attained was completely different. Baizemon answered. Seeing Lilith at a loss, Bai Zemin really started to worry. Lilith, what's wrong? Lilith took a deep breath, but no matter how hard she tried, it was not possible to calm her heartbeat. Therefore, she had no choice but to explain while her emotions were in total disarray. Overlap regeneration is a skill that allows you to take stat points and add them to another stat almost with total freedom. Do you know what this means? She asked in a serious voice. Baizemon frowned and after a moment he hesitantly replied, it means I am able to modify my soul? Lilith nodded and said word for word, right. Now, tell me what happens when a novice becomes proficient in modifying a vehicle and is granted all the necessary means with which said vehicle was built. Build another Baizemon suddenly stopped abruptly and his eyes twitched as he looked at Lilith in shock. Creation. Lilith took a deep breath, and her pupils twitched in sync with Baizemon's as she slowly said, overlap regeneration. That second activation, I heard of it before. How could she not know of the skill when one of the people most dear to her tried all its life to find it? This person went so far as to try to attain the spirit goddess firmament fragment, whose power was said to be able to modify souls to a certain extent. Unfortunately, that person failed and with this failure all hope came crashing down. Maybe I'm completely wrong, but I dare to bet my life on this. Lilith looked by Zemin straight in the eyes and said in a serious voice, By Zemin, at this rate, there is a possibility that at some point you will be able to bring the dead back to life, and even create life just by thinking about it. Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner and the Apocalypse, Chapter 560 Sexual Tension to the Limit and Tears of Joy, Chapter 560 Sexual Tension to the Limit and Tears of Joy, the power to bring the dead back to life was a power that should only belong to the supreme existence, the absolute one, the overlord that could overwhelm time and space in order to twist reality at will and change the natural rules not only of the universe but of life in general. The same applied to the power of creation. Creating life was not as simple as building a television set, because to create life first and foremost required a essence, a soul. But how was it possible to create a soul? After all, the way each and every soul of Oliver grew, regardless of race, was by absorbing part of the soul power of another existence. In case someone had the ability to create souls at will, wouldn't that someone be able to continue evolving infinitely at lightning speed? However, such things were too far from the imagination of someone like Baizemin. No matter how talented he was or how deep the veil of mystery surrounding him seemed to be, at the end of the day, the existence known as Baizemin was just a first-order human that didn't even know exactly who he was let alone about the creation of other lives. This is too crazy. Baizemin sighed and shook his head as he took his free hand to rub the central area of his forehead with a finger. Bring back the dead to life? Create life? Lilith, the only thing I'm capable of doing now is modifying my own soul, but even then I have limitations, not to mention the fact that the consequences for overusing this skill could cost me my life. I guess you're right, Lilith also shook her head and let go of his hand that she was holding, thus breaking the link between their souls. It's too early to jump to conclusions. As you always say, let's better focus on what's right in front of us. After all, looking too far ahead could lead to despair. There were many things that were temporarily better left unknowing than in the open. By Zemin, promise me that if at any time someone asks you regarding this skill, you will never say anything to that someone, unless it is someone you trust with your life on the line. 
she looked him in the eye and asked in an almost pleading voice. How could he say no to such a beautiful little face that looked pitiful as she looked at him with eyes similar to those of a little puppy, waiting to receive the favor of its owner? Don't worry, I won't say anything. By Zeman assured earnestly. To begin with, he was not someone who liked to share his skills with others, as it would mean putting strengths and weaknesses out in the open. But now that he knew how dangerous the skill regeneration was and how infinite its potency seemed to be, Bizemon felt it would be best to be very careful in the future, or he could get into serious trouble. Putting aside the fact whether he would ever reach the level of being able to bring the dead back to life, and putting aside the fact whether he would ever manage to create life with a mere thought, the simple fact of being able to modify his soul to adapt to different fighting styles and confrontations was already insane enough to scare anyone. It was demonstrated in the battle on the bridge that if it wasn't for the limitation of the excessive use of overlap regeneration on the body and on the soul, Bai Zemin could have easily wiped out the 20 million zombies long before a day had passed, he could even have annihilated the zombie leader, beast leader, and even the mermaid princess with his bare hands without destroying the bridge. That was how strong overlap regeneration was. Bai Zemin noticed that despite having said what she said, Lilith was still mute as a result of the shock she had just received, so much so that he doubted whether he should continue talking about everything that happened during the time she was not with him. After all, overlap regeneration, although it was a tremendous surprise, Bai Zemin had acquired many amazing records that in his eyes, were not inferior to that skill. Deciding to let Lilith rest a bit to settle her thoughts and emotions, Bai Zemin was about to immerse himself in his records to check some messages he had received during the fight, which caught his attention when suddenly a new message flashed across his retina at lightning speed, followed by several more. Congratulations! You have become the most powerful existence in the entire Yanking district of China, and have managed to hold your ground for over 72 hours, without allowing another being to be able to threaten your rule. Congratulations! Your camp has officially become the human camp with the largest population in the entire Yanking district of China. Congratulations! Within your base camp resides 90% of the human population of the entire Yanking district of China, and thus you are considered as the ruler of mankind in the boundaries. You have received the title leader of Yanking. Leader of Yanking. When you are outside the Yanking district, this title allows you to teleport anywhere in the Yanking district. The effect of the title has a cooldown time of 30 days. It cannot be used while the user is in combat or out of Earth. You have received hidden reward. Bai Zemin didn't even have time to react at all, and while he was dumbfounded a flash of bright light appeared out of nowhere in front of him. This is Lilith abruptly raised her gaze and looked in the direction of the ceiling, where she felt alteration in the space-time flow, only to come across a strange wooden tower that looked like a pagoda, similar to what many Chinese families had in their homes as decorations. The wooden pagoda flew silently towards Bai Zemin, and he subconsciously stretched out his hands, such that the approximately 10-centimeter tall object fell gently onto his palm. Lilith's eyes sparkled with excitement at the sight of the object in the hands of Bai Zemin, as she recognized what it was. She seemed to have completely forgotten about the matter regarding overlap regeneration, as like a little girl whose wish had been fulfilled by her parents, she let out a high-pitched cry that carried all her joy. Bai Zemin did not have time to react once again when Lilith pounced towards him like a lioness. Bang! Both he and she fell off the bed and hit the ground hard due to the sudden charge of Lilith, but fortunately this kind of fall meant nothing to both of them. L. Lilith? Bai Zemin raised both hands towards the sky as he used his sidelong glance on the woman whose body rested on top of his. To say he was shocked was an understatement. Not only had his vision just been flooded by messages from the soul record, but he even received a strange reward, and as icing on the cake Lilith suddenly started to act strange. This was the first time Lilith showed such abrupt changes of emotions in front of him, and it was also the first time Bai Zemin felt that she was 200% happy about something. Was she so happy because of the small wooden pagoda Oh, Lilith did not respond, nor did she say anything regardless of how much Bai Zemin tried. All she did was hug him tightly. How could Bai Zemin not react when the scent of roses that always drove him crazy suddenly flooded his sense of smell? How could he not be driven wild when his sense of touch was suddenly overwhelmed by a body so soft and delicate that it did nothing but summon the primordial desires of any male? Feeling those two huge mountains pressing tenderly against his firm chest and feeling the feminine breath delicately caressing the side of his neck, Bai Zemin's manhood awakened without even giving him a chance to calm down again. As Lilith hugged Bai Zemin tightly and her face gently settled between his neck, she naturally felt the middle part of her body being lifted slightly at the presence of a lever that was previously not there, or rather previously not in working hours. 
How could she not know what that lever was? While Lilith was a virgin, she knew the human body perfectly so naturally she understood immediately what was going on. She blushed slightly and a slight flash of surprise flickered in her beautiful ruby eyes. Big, thick, and hot those were the only three words Lilith could use in her mind to describe the object that was hitting her midsection so hard that even through her dress, she could feel its overwhelming presence and high temperature as the blood-filled veins caused its size to slowly grow in size. Even then, she did not move. Despite her embarrassment, her desire to hug by Zemina's proof of how happy she was at present proved to be overwhelmingly superior. Moreover, she also felt no rejection towards this second encounter filled with sexual tension. You little scoundrel, currently, I am really happy. The whisper of Lilith was as faint as the buzzing of a mosquito in the distance, but since her face was buried between by Zemin's neck, her words reached the desired destination smoothly. He felt her breath tickling the left side of his neck, and his whole body shivered. The level of excitement that Baizemin believed had reached its peak rose along with his body temperature, and for the first time since acquiring the skill blood manipulation, he could do nothing as the blood in his body began to rush rapidly, and as his heart pumped like crazy the area between his legs continued to rise like a dragon trying to pierce the clouds. At this point, if previously Baizemin tried to lie to himself saying that Lilith probably hadn't noticed and that's why she continued without moving, he had no choice but to admit that even a dead one would wake up if their bodies were suddenly poked hard enough to lift them up and keep the lower part levitating like a magic trick. Baizemin began to sweat bullets as his body temperature climbed higher and higher. He was surprised that his symbol of masculinity was strong enough to lift a woman's body in such a way. Before the apocalypse such a thing would definitely be impossible, and any man who tried would probably have to go to the doctor to try to fix his little brother's tear or even break. However, now things were different, this was especially so for Baizemin, whose physical body was constantly being nourished by his tremendously pure soul power. The current him really was comparable to a beast, and he feared that no human woman could keep him company in the bedroom, which added to his colossal stamina, turned by Zemin into something Lilith had told him during the early days of the apocalypse, an unstoppable sex machine. Why you're happy? By Zemin spoke. His breathing was heavy, and his voice horse's lust began to take over his ever-compassed exterior. Although Lilith felt that by Zemin's lust lot and husky voice was incredibly sexy in comparison to his usually calm and indifferent voice, she managed to continue. M.M. I'm very happy. Lilith whispered again as she nodded softly, causing her long black hair to gently caress his face slowly. That little wooden pagoda in your hand is proof that I have guided you on the right path, regardless of all the difficulties and sudden changes that occurred as we went along. As we went along by Zem and said her last words again, realizing that indeed he had never been walking alone, and that his burdens were indeed not his only. When he suffered, Lilith suffered. When he was on the verge of death, Lilith was also on the verge of death. When he despaired, despair threatened to loom over Lilith. It was just that by Zem and had no way of knowing how important he had become to her in these little more than two months of time. Even now that he was slowly beginning to awaken he had no way of knowing how much. As if suddenly a bucket of ice water was thrown on a small campfire that threatened to turn into a forest fire, the rising lust that overwhelmed by Zemin receded at lightning speed, and along with the settling of his lower body his arms that were frozen pointing towards the ceiling, automatically came down to wrap around the waist of the woman resting on his body, and hugging him as if her life depended on it. At the same time and with his mind now clearer, curiosity won over by Zemin. Was this small wooden pagoda important enough for Lilith to react like this? Let's see it then. With a thought, the records of the small object resting within his hand reflected in his pupils. As Baizemin read more and more, greater was the surprise in his eyes, until it reached the peak when realization hit him. Ha 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 ha. The laughter of Baizemin echoed through the four walls of the room, bouncing and echoing. His laughter was charged with relief, joy, pride, and many positive emotions that pushed him over the edge. Lilith felt her hair get wet out of nowhere, and seconds later that wetness reached her face. She knew what that humidity represented, and therefore she simply stood there, silent, to avoid hurting the pride of the little man who was now hugging her tighter. Regardless of whether they were tears of joy, probably someone as proud as by Zemin would not want the woman who was slowly winning his heart to see such a pathetic expression as the one he currently had on his face. However, now it was Lilith's turn to be surprised and curious, because while she expected him to be surprised and relieved, she did not expect that obtaining the small wooden pagoda would be enough to make him shed tears.